COVID has taught us many invaluable things, whether it's surviving in life or keeping retail businesses up and running smoothly. And thus, online shops got shed on their old skin. During the pandemic, people all over the world have almost forgotten when the last time they went to a physical shop instead of shopping online. From then onward, it seems like every day brings a new way of selling products online in the most innovative way. And this is how Livestream e-commerce got a new identity. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited to be live with you. I'm Miriam Sandler and I'm the face behind Mother Could. Hi from <laughs> Ohio, hi from San Diego. Hello from Honduras, hello, hello. Alejandra, hi, how are you? And like her, millions of retailers, AKA product influencers, promote their products through online videos, showcase the products, and answer questions from the audience, which technically translates to their fans and followers. According to Statista, in a 2023 survey, eight out of 10 online shoppers in China had already bought products through live streaming. India came in second with 75% of respondents. And the marketplaces like Whatnot have opened up new windows for the live stream business Yes, founded in 2019 by Logan Head and Grant LaFontaine, this social marketplace acts as a mediator between buyers and sellers. There's no denying that this is quite a different platform for online business. Sharing their unique business model, LaFontaine said, We now call ourselves like a live stream shopping platform and online marketplace. Um, the thing that differentiates whatnot relative to most traditional marketplaces is our live and social features. Um, the average person comes on whatnot for about two hours a day, engaging with the community, watching live video, etc. Talking about their growth, he also shared. In January of 2021, we were 10. So we've added about 160 people in the past 15 months. We'll get to about 300 uh, people by the end of this year. We've raised uh, $225 million. Um, we're the fastest growing marketplace ever in the United States. Not, and we've had the title from Andreessen for the past two years in a row. By July 2021, Whatnot had gathered 2.2 million users. They've managed to secure a total of $60 million in funding by March 2024 and make the valuation of the business worth $3.7 billion. Now the questions arise, how fast and well-grounded their success rate is? Are they becoming the future of live stream shopping? or it's just another hype that can die down anytime. Well, let's break it down. Could you imagine that a childhood hobby like collecting Pokemon cards could inspire a business model like whatnot? Yes, in the bustling city of Los Angeles, these two friends initiated an idea that would change the way people buy and sell collectibles. Before delving into Whatnot's backstory, let's take a flashback to LaFontaine's early age. When he was just seven, he started selling Pokemon cards on eBay. As he grew older, he and his buddy Logan Head got into selling trendy sneakers in their 20s. I used to um, buy and sell Pokemon cards when I was like seven or eight. I used to sell on like eBay, Yahoo Auctions. And it was like pretty big in resale markets. I used to buy and resell sneakers as well. Later, they both became busy pursuing their career. Grant worked as a product manager at Facebook, co-founded Kit, and served as a product marketing manager at Google. On the other hand, Logan held the position of senior product manager at Goat in 2018. With a shared passion for rare finds and a knack for entrepreneurship, they decided to create Whatnot in December 2019. Their journey began with dreams of building a platform where anything could be bought and sold. But soon, they realized they should work on something that they are already interested in, which is collectibles. Narrowing their focus, they started by trading sneakers before expanding into Funko Pops, those adorable vinyl collectibles loved by fans worldwide. Yet, they hungered for something more, something that would set them apart from the rest in the summer of 2020, after six weeks of tireless coding, Logan added Whatnot's newest feature, live streaming. Then they nervously launched their first live stream, not knowing what the outcome would be. To their amazement, the response was overwhelming. Within hours, they sold $5,000 worth of Funko Pops, proving that their vision was more than just a dream, a reality. 
Back in May 2021, LaFontaine shared that they were making millions every month from selling sports cards, which was their top selling product. So, he has started selling more stuff, reaching out to all sorts of customers, not just the collectors they used to cater to. By June 2022, the WhatNot app hit 2 million installations from both the App Store and Google Play. Among them, 89% users were from the USA. Seeing this, the CEO announced in the following month, July, that they're eager to branch out into more categories. WhatNot launched their first ad product, Boosted Livestreams. With this, sellers can buy the top spot in their category feed for 15 minutes, which brought in more cash for the company. And then we all know what happened. Ranking at number 9 on Andreessen Horowitz's Top 100 Marketplaces of 2023 list, WhatNot set its new mission and vision. Regarding this, LaFontaine stated that over 100 WhatNot sellers hit the $1 million mark in 2022. Then, in November 2023, WhatNot signed for the lease of a spacious office space in Manhattan, locking in a cozy 15,000 square feet for the next seven years. And this is the backstory of WhatNot. But these numbers and years don't clearly indicate the extent of success WhatNot has achieved. Well, let's take a closer look at this. If we check out the LinkedIn profile of one of the CEOs of WhatNot, Logan Head, we can see that before launching WhatNot, he used to work at GOAT. But the twist comes when we go through Andreessen Horowitz's Top 100 Marketplaces of 2023 list. It's clearly visible that WhatNot is ranked just after GOAT. GOAT started their journey in 2015, and Logan worked for them in 2018 before founding his own company, which is now ranked similarly to his previous employer, where he was just an employee. And all this happened in just three years. WhatNot offers a unique experience for both buyers and sellers, combining live auctions with live stream interaction. Sellers have the flexibility to list items for auction in their Buy It Now bin store or as giveaways during live streams. For buyers participating in live streams, there are various methods to bid on items. One can simply swipe to bid using the bid button on iOS and Android devices, which automatically places a bid slightly higher than the current winning bid. Alternatively, if anyone prefers to bid a custom amount, they have the option to manually enter a bid or set a maximum bid amount. If they set a max bid, the app will bid on their behalf up to that amount when the item goes up for auction. Additionally, it's possible to place bids on items before they go live in an auction, setting a maximum bid amount in advance. Now comes the question of how they market their fortune. WhatNot started out by selling collectibles like sports cards and comic books to collectors and fans. Now they're expanding their business to attract more consumers with different interests. They're eyeing Europe next and are especially interested to explore the world of fashion. As LaFontaine stated, that fashion is their jackpot to grow faster. After launching in 2019, COVID hit in 2020. Did their growth slump due to the pandemic? No, instead it boomed beyond expectation. LaFontaine shared, we've not seen any slowdown in the business whatsoever linked to before or after COVID. Our growth has and continues to be very good. Following that success, 2023 was their best year on record by a mile. Plus, they're beefing up their team, looking to hire about 40% to 50% more folks this year. Speaking of cash whatnot scored a whopping $260 million in Series D funding, pushing their value up to a cool $3.7 billion in July 2022. That's a huge jump of 147% from its previous valuation, where they were $1.5 billion in September 2021. So how do they make their money? By taking a small cut of each sale, around 8%. Most of their sellers are folks who collect and resell stuff themselves, but not everyone can just start selling on whatnot. You have to apply, and LaFontaine mentioned that they accept less than half of the applicants. While he didn't spill the exact number of sellers, he did mention that last year, WhatNot had over 100 sellers who made a million bucks in sales. That's pretty impressive, right? Experimentation on different categories. Fashion brings the biggest revenue for WhatNot. LaFontaine said, Fashion is our fastest growing segment by a pretty long shot. Within a year or two, I wouldn't be surprised if fashion is the biggest. And this is how WhatNot is becoming a more reliable and fastest growing marketplace. 
Some sellers are actually quitting their day jobs to dive headfirst into their whatnot gigs. Take Zareen, for instance, known as ZKS Styles on the platform. She made a whopping $50,000 in just three months and decided to leave her finance job to run her fashion store full time. Then there's Shoe Game Co., another seller who started out selling sneakers on whatnot. They sold a jaw dropping $250,000 worth of kicks in just three months, and now they're doing it as a full time gig. Whatnot launched in 2019 with zero revenue and hit $38.9 million in revenue within 2023. There's no denying that launching the live streaming feature brings Whatnot real success. So, can we say that live streaming business is creating a new era of online business? Maybe yes. Well, live stream shopping is a fusion of online entertainment and e-commerce that experienced rapid growth in China after its emergence during Alibaba's Taobao Live launch in May 2016. By 2021, live stream shopping accounted for 11.7% of all retail e-commerce sales in China, or about $366 billion. If we look into the CNBC report, emphasizing the importance of live streaming shopping. During pandemic lockdowns, these live streams took China by storm. Chinese retail giant Alibaba was first to market there, launching its live stream app Taobao Live in 2016. Quinn Mai, CEO and founder of Culture said, They really want to be showing the product, how it works, and showing its efficacy. Um, and it's also entertainment. We have millions and millions and millions of fans. So even if 10% show up, that's still a million. People want to buy products with meaning or product that they can't get anywhere else. And, and that's really what's the, the underpinning of live shopping. Coming to the US market in 2022, live stream shopping brought in about $20 billion in the US. Compare that to the total e-commerce sales of $7.1 trillion that year. Live stream shopping made up just 2% of all online shopping and a tiny 0.3% of all sales in the US. But it's not just in whatnot, but instead Amazon, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they're all in on it. And these platforms are making it easy for creators to go live and sell stuff directly to their followers. It's like a whole new way of shopping and it's changing mainstream online selling. So is live shopping here to stay? Only time will tell. But for now, retailers have become creators who are showing us that the future of shopping might just be live. So what are your thoughts on Whatnot's growth and how would you describe the key strategies contributing to their success from your point of view? Let us know in the comment section below.